I'm Eddie Conway coming to you from Baltimore with this special edition of Rattling the Bars. Uh, for the last several months, I have been looking at uh, organizing efforts uh, by prison supporters and family members to organize a national strike uh, in August 19th in Washington, D.C. And so I have with me today Lauren Carappa. I'd like for her to kind of like just update us on the industrial workers of the world and the work they're doing around the prison industrial complex. Thanks for joining me. Can you tell me a little bit about your organization? Um, the Industrial Workers of, of the World um, is a union um, for people um, from all industries and just um, it's an anti-capitalist union. Um, that does a lot of workplace organizing, but um, recently um, with the September 9th prison strikes um, that were organized initially by the Free Alabama Movement, um, the Incarcerated Workers Organizing Committee popped up as a, a branch or a project of the IWW um, to help coordinate the strike um, to support workers on the inside from the outside. It's my understanding then that you work with the Free Alabama Movement and the rest of the national prison strikes. I think it covered like maybe 12 states or something like that. And it lasted almost three weeks. Uh, uh, so did uh, IWW organize uh, uh, in the prison population as a result of the strike and the work that you were doing with them? And if you did, how successful was that? Um, yes, we did. We have um, over 900 members now in prisons around the country, um, and there are no dues um, or anything to join if you're a prisoner. Um, and so the way that we helped out is that, and that we continue to help out is through um, correspondence. And um, by corresponding with prisoners, we can help get their message to other prisons um, and kind of help people stay connected. Well, well, to step back a minute because I'm kind of like a student of history, as I was telling you earlier, and I, I'm aware of the IWW uh, and the organizing that they did around uh, 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 the unionizing of uh, workers, uh, the opposition they had to World War One, uh, the kind of stuff they went through during the Red Scare. Uh, a lot of people I know were shipped out of the country as a result of that. And I actually thought that the uh, organization had disappeared. And so I was fortunate enough to run into a couple of the organizers and now it seems to be a resurgence. Can you tell us, give us a little history, what happened, why is it back now, and how well is it doing? Um. Well, I do know that in D.C. just last year we had about 30 members and now it's at least doubled um, since, uh, very recently since Trump was elected. We've had a huge resurgence in membership um, as far um, as nationally, I think in the past um, 15 or 20 years we've had more of a resurgence, but you're right, it, had, it did die out. Um, for a few decades there, there wasn't much much activity going on at all. But um, I think there's been a, a big um, increase in interest in um, more revolutionary or leftist organizations since Trump um, was elected. Okay, and I, I heard you say earlier that you were like at least corresponding with uh, one or two prisoners in Virginia or something like that. Yeah. Uh, What's the situation in uh, D.C.? I know that's not necessary prisons, but it's like local jails and stuff. Uh, are y'all working with any of the prisoners uh, in, on, you know, in the D.C. area in which you can maybe reach out to their families or something like that? Is that happening? Yeah, so I mean, we actually are in contact with um, about uh, over a hundred prisoners in the Virginia and Maryland area. Um, it's just hard to to keep regular contact with that many prisoners. We 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 um, stay in contact with them like 
once or twice a year we'll like write a letter we send them our newsletter um, and there's about 20 prison or 20 yeah 20 prisons in 11 different cities in Maryland and Virginia that we're um, in contact with um, and we're about to start a partnership with one DC and we're um, going they're going to um, work with us to get uh, to begin corresponding with people in federal institutions which are like a separate thing and a lot of the um, people who are arrested in DC if they go to prison they end up going to federal prison because um, DC is not a state and so the courts are run by the federal system so hopefully we'll begin working with more um, like DC residents that way we do correspond a little bit with people in DC jails but usually since it's jail they're they're not they don't stick around in one place for too long so it's harder to like have a solid um, like organizing movement going in a uh, jail but we do we do get some correspondence from from the jails mm -hmm. so what what is it you intend to do your organization that is uh, in relationship to the August 19th national million families for uh, human rights for prisoners uh, a protest and march that's going to be in DC. What are you doing? What's the role that your organization is playing in that? Yeah, August 19th, there's a uh, Millions for Prisoners Human Rights March in DC. Um, and there are several organizations that are involved with organizing that. Um, IWOC, um, which is the Incarcerated Workers Organizing Committee, again, um, is trying, is helping to. Um, work with prisoners to um, to um, do correspond corresponding actions like strikes or um, we're kind of letting them take the lead on that to decide on what, how they want to be involved in the action. Um, in Texas, I know there is a working group of um, IWW members, incarcerated IWW members, and um, they've decided to do a canteen boycott for two months in support of the um, in solidarity or like it's, it's for them so <laughs> um, as part of their um, action um, in relation to that event and um, another idea that one of them had that um, DCI walk is going to help carry out is that um, at the march we're going to represent prisoners by making um, larger copies of our red cards, which is our union membership card with um, their names on it and their signatures so that the, the incarcerated members will actually be represented at the march um, through the um, symbolism of their red cards. So people on the outside can see, since um, prisoners are largely invisible from, from most people, um, it, it's like a representation of like, these are the, the workers um, in prison who are doing doing jobs at slave wages um, and making corporations um, wealthy at their expense. Thank you for joining me for this look at the industrial workers of the world and the work they're doing around the prison industrial complex. And thank you for joining me for this episode of Rattling the Bars.